Welcome everyone. We have been invited here today to witness and celebrate the marriage of John and Emily. They are taking their first step in their new beginning, their new life together. The ability and desire for one human being to love another is perhaps the most precious and fulfilling gift that has been entrusted to us. It is an all-consuming task, a lifelong endeavor, the journey we've been preparing for all our lives. Loving someone is a reason to stretch beyond our limits. Loving is the ultimate commitment which challenges human beings to become all that we were meant to be. So this is the story all about how my sister met a boy and I was so proud. Emily moved to Virginia to find a job. Over coffee meets bagel, John came along. Emily, I fall in love with you every day. I fell in love with you in a hotel room. <laughs> in a hotel room on FaceTime when I told you my dream came true. I fell in love with you on a barracks phone when I told you I was going to be gone for a while. I fell in love with you in a cold barracks room writing you a letter and reading yours. Dear John, writing letters played an in integral part in the formation of our relationship. So here's one more. We have seen good days and bad days tears and smiles. You've seen me at my lowest of lows when I felt as though I was losing my entire sense of self in those dark days. And yet you supported me, stood by me, and cared for me. Your love for me never wavered, and I'm so grateful that you held my hand and helped to plant my feet back on the ground. <laughs> I fell in love with you on a boat in the bay. You smiled at me and joined me and our friends on two hours of sleep. I fell in love with you at Mobile City Animal Shelter, looking at a quiet little puppy that isn't quite so quiet anymore, <laughs> or little. I fell in love with you in our living room when you said yes, I think. <laughs> I fell in love with you in our bedroom when I woke you up to tell you my dream was still alive. I fell in love with you at Disney World when you smiled at the stars in my eyes. I vow to remember that any and all time together is precious and to continue to make time for little adventures and travel. I will love you even when I don't like you and remember <laughs> that those moments are fleeting. I will encourage your aspirations and help to shoulder our challenges. With kindness and unselfishness and trust, I promise to be your partner, your best friend, and companion today and always. Love, Emily. I fell in love with you when you walked down that aisle, and I will fall in love with you every day for the rest of my life. John and Emily, you have heard the words about love and marriage, you've exchanged some vows, by the power invested in me by John and Emily, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride.
she ended up meeting John. John? Who's this John guy? John is a very good guy. Before I go on, I want to thank the plants, Jim and Maureen, for raising such a wonderful son. He is kind, compassion, and always thinking of Emily with all his actions. Together, I think they'll conquer mountains. Let's all pick up our glasses and celebrate the John and Emily. So thank you for coming. You all look great, but no one can compare to my sister today. Love you forever and enjoy yourselves, but good luck, John. She's yours now. John is the kind of friend who's always, always there for you. I've always admired the perseverance it's taken for him to get knocked down and get back up and continue to fight. And I know it's the kind of dedication that John will bring to this marriage. One spring, Emily Stoner and I decided to visit Emily. For some reason, Emily decided to book an 8 a.m. flight on Sunday morning. So after celebrating Emily's birthday late that night, we might have accidentally overslept all of the alarms. They got up, ran around the room, tried to catch that flight. I found out later that Emily called the airport and asked if they could hold the plane just for them. I think this story describes Emily's big heart pretty well. She would do anything for her friends and family, even try to stop a plane. Someone once told me that true love is the soul's recognition of its counterpoint in another. And I think we can all agree that that's something that's pretty rare in this world. It's something that is, should be valued, and I'm so happy for you both that you found. 